In just nine minutes, uncover mind-blowing insights from Stephen Bartlett's chat with top neuroscientist Dr. Lisa Barrett on The Diary of a CEO. Dr. Barrett exposes how your brain fakes trauma, predicts before you see, and turns anxiety into a lie. Learn to trick fear, stop dreading dogs, and make big decisions with 10 life-changing takeaways that rewire your mind. Takeaway one, your brain guesses before it sees. Your brain is not just reacting to the world. It's actually guessing what's about to happen before it happens. Think of it like your brain is a fortune teller, constantly predicting what you'll feel, see, or hear based on past experiences. For example, if you've been bitten by a dog in the past, your brain might start predicting fear whenever you see a dog, even if the dog is calm. It's not the dog itself. It's your brain guessing based on old info. Here's how to apply this. If you find yourself feeling anxious or scared and you're not sure why, pause and ask, what is my brain predicting right now? Then look around and see if the situation actually supports that fear. You can retrain your brain by updating it with new experiences. The next time you see a friendly dog and nothing bad happens, your brain learns that maybe it doesn't need to predict fear anymore. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway two, emotions are built, not automatic. Most people think emotions just happen to us, like anger or sadness just popping up. But that's not really true. Emotions are built by your brain, combining your body signals and what's happening around you. For example, your heart races. If you're in a gym, your brain says, oh, that's exercise. But if you're about to speak in public, your brain might say, I'm anxious. It's the same body signal, but the emotion changes depending on the context. To apply this, the next time you feel overwhelmed or emotional, stop and ask yourself, is this feeling about what's happening now? Or is my brain using an old blueprint? Label the feeling and think about what might be influencing it. Just doing that can help you feel more in control. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway three, your brain fakes trauma sometimes. Not all memories or trauma responses are reliable. Your brain fills in the blanks and sometimes gets it wrong. That doesn't mean your suffering isn't real. It just means the brain can mislabel a situation as dangerous when it's not. For example, if you got embarrassed in school once, your brain might later tag every social interaction as risky. You feel real anxiety, but the threat isn't always real. Here's how to use this. Instead of always trusting the alarm bells in your head, pause and ask, is this danger or discomfort? Most of the time, it's just discomfort. Learning to sit with that feeling and test it in safe environments helps reset those false trauma triggers. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway four, anxiety is a prediction error. Anxiety isn't a flaw. It's your brain predicting something bad is going to happen and your body reacts like it already has. The issue, your brain might be wrong. For example, let's say you're walking into a meeting and suddenly feel panicked. Your brain is predicting judgment, failure or rejection even though nothing bad has happened yet. To manage this, use the prediction check-in method. Step one, notice the anxiety. Step two, ask, what is my brain predicting? Step three, ask, what is the actual evidence right now? If your body is reacting to a false alarm, you can calm it by showing your brain that the danger it predicted isn't here. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway five, control your body to calm your mind. Your brain listens to your body. If your body is tense and breathing fast, your brain assumes something is wrong. But if you control your breathing and posture, your brain can calm down. For example, if you feel anxious, start by slowing down your breath and relaxing your shoulders. Even just three deep breaths can signal to your brain that things are safe. Here's how to apply this right now. Practice slow, deep breathing when you're not stressed. So it becomes automatic during tough moments. Step one. Breathe in slowly through your nose for four seconds. Step two, hold for two seconds. Step three, exhale slowly through your mouth for six seconds. Do this a few times and your brain will start to follow your body's lead. We're halfway through the video. Thank you for sticking with us this far. If you're enjoying it, please give us a thumbs up and share it in your WhatsApp groups. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to comment below. To see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Now let's continue with the video. Takeaway six, concepts shape what you feel. Your brain uses concepts to understand your feelings. If you don't have a name or idea for what you're feeling, your brain struggles to process it. The more emotion words you know, 
the better your brain gets at handling emotions. For example, knowing the difference between annoyed, frustrated, and furious helps your brain fine-tune what you're experiencing, instead of just labeling everything as angry. Here's how to use this. Build your emotional vocabulary. Instead of just saying, I feel bad, try finding the exact word. Are you tired? Lonely? Embarrassed? The more precise you are, the easier it is for your brain to handle it. You can even keep a list of feeling words to check when you're confused. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway seven, rest is essential for good decisions. A tired brain makes worse predictions. When your brain is low on energy, it's more likely to predict danger, feel overwhelmed, or make bad choices. For example, think about how small problems feel huge when you're sleep deprived. Your brain is more negative when it's running on empty. To apply this, make rest a priority. Step one, aim for consistent sleep by going to bed at the same time. Step two, take real breaks during the day, not just scrolling your phone. Step three, notice when you're mentally drained and delay big decisions until you're rested. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway eight, you can rewire how you feel. Your brain is changeable. That means you're not stuck with the same emotional habits forever. With practice, your brain can learn new ways to respond to old situations. For example, if social situations make you anxious, you can train your brain to feel safe by slowly exposing yourself to them in small doses and focusing on the positive outcomes. Here's how to do it. Start small. Step one, go into the situation just long enough to feel a little uncomfortable. Step two, remind yourself that nothing bad happened. Step three, repeat. Over time, your brain learns this is not a threat. That's rewiring in action. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway. Nine, your brain doesn't care about truth. Your brain is built to keep you alive, not to tell you the truth. If lying to yourself helps you survive, your brain will do it. That's why we sometimes feel strongly about things that aren't even true. For example, someone might believe they're unlovable, not because it's true, but because their brain built that belief from painful past experiences. It's a protective prediction, not a fact. To deal with this, practice checking your beliefs. Ask, is this something I know or something I feel? Then challenge it. Find evidence that goes against the belief. Over time, you'll start to loosen the grip of lies your brain has been using for protection. Now let's move to the last takeaway. Takeaway 10. Naming it helps you tame it. When you name what you're feeling, it becomes easier to manage. Neuroscience shows that labeling emotions lowers activity in the emotional part of your brain and boosts control in the thinking part. For example, instead of saying, I feel awful, say, I feel disappointed. That small shift makes a big difference. Here's how to use this in real life. When you feel overwhelmed, take a moment to pause and ask yourself, what exactly am I feeling right now? Be as specific as possible. The clearer you are, the quicker your brain can move from reacting to responding. And the more you practice this, the better you get at handling tough moments like a pro. These takeaways are more than just ideas. They are tools. Use them, test them, talk about them. Your brain is not fixed. It's learning all the time. And the more you show it a better way, the faster it follows. You've got way more control than you think. Here is a brief introduction about Dr. Lisa Barrett. Dr. Lisa Feldman. Barrett is a professor of psychology and among the top 0.1% of most cited scientists for her revolutionary research in psychology and neuroscience. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit like below and share this video in your WhatsApp groups. You can also discuss about this video by commenting below. To get more such videos in your timeline, press the subscribe button below.